Okay, so this is Gundamaniac and Novastar, aka Brian and Matthew. We're going to go ahead and go through this uh, CF wiring guide. Uh, first thing we're going to do is cover a few materials and just some basics. We're going to just breeze through them, so you know this is not to be a giant long uh, thing. First of all, of course, you have crystal focus boards. So Brian's going to just kind of hold that up. Obviously, there it is. It's got the SD card. A lot of you guys already have it pre-wired. You know, there's some things already on there because Herb set that up. It's up to you. You can um, release those wires by desoldering them or whatever you want to do, but that's helpful for some people. Obviously, you're going to want to have some wire. So I've got some 22 gauge wire examplers here. Just get a couple of this. You want to make sure to buy a stranded wire. That's the most important, not solid core, otherwise you'll get a nice solid wire. Um, and this makes it much easier to strip. Other things that will help you, obviously, will be a soldering iron station of some sort. This one may be fancier than some of you might have out there. You can see it's got a little sponge on there. Um, and of course there's the iron. Mine has a little LED on the inside to tell you if it's on or not, but it doesn't matter. You just need a basic soldering iron and uh, a clean tip. Uh, something else that will help you, sort of like a helping hand, it's kind of a little clamp thing where you can hold the wire to something. It doesn't even have to be this. Um, these are just some extra parts that I've kind of put together, a little bit of Jaws of Life thing down there, whatever, a little shark tooth thing. You can hold the wire in place, act as your third hand, because as you guys have probably found out, if you've soldered anything, it can be a pain in the butt to put something together when you really need a third hand and you don't have it. Okay. Uh, other things helpful, needle nose pliers, um, we have these over here and those are of course good for gripping wires. It can also act as a heat sink uh, when the wire is clamped to it as well. So that helps you position a wire correctly. Um, obviously you'll need solder, so we have some solder uh, uh, cores here, a uh, little resin or whatever it's called, I always forget the name, but you get the idea. You go in the store and buy this stuff, that's what's going to, um, oh that's right, rosin core solder. <laughs> Um, thank you, Brian. Thank you. <laughs> also, you'll want strippers. Um, and I don't mean the kind that take off the clothes. Obviously, I mean the kind of wire strippers that take off the casings of the wire. This one is a multi-tool. If uh, Brian flips it over, you can see it can also act as cutters. You'll need those also. You don't need a multi-tool. You can just get whatever you want. Okay. Other thing to have um, is heat shrink. Heat shrink is a good thing uh, to use, especially when you're doing something more complex like this. Me. As you guys have noted probably in the past, I don't really use the heat shrink in my very simple projects. Sometimes I do, but for something like Crystal Focus, you're going to want that, okay? So that's about it on the basics. There are more things that you, you're going to want to have, but um, that at least covers it for now, okay? So um, we'll go ahead and move on to something else. Okay, so here we can see the Crystal Focus board a little bit closer up. But now we're going to go ahead and work on speakers. Okay, this is the next thing that Brian's going to connect. Now, as you can see, there's already a speaker connected to this, and Brian will show you that one. But he doesn't want to use that one. We're going to try a different speaker just for the fun of it. I've got a different speaker that I, I could give to him. And you can see he's also put a quick disconnect on it. And he can disconnect that really quick. Um, if you're not familiar with these, they're available at the Custom Saver Shop. So um, you don't have to use this kind of connector. Um, you can use whatever you like. But um, in general, this is just something that helps you quickly take two wires apart without having to unsolder and resolder and unsolder and resolder. Okay, so he's going to go ahead and um, clip the speaker wire over here from the old speaker, or not so much the old one, but this other 28 millimeter one, and instead he'll put a uh, 36 millimeter one on there. Okay, so we'll go ahead and show you all that. So he clips the wires again with their multi-tool. And um, again, you don't even have to use a multi-tool. You could use scissors if you wanted to. It doesn't really matter. Um, but it's best to use wire cutters. Then what he'll do is he'll strip the wires. I'm going to try to zoom in on that a little bit for you. Although, if you don't know how to strip wires, this is not the video for you. You need to um, go and learn how to do that from a different video. You can see he's exposed some of the wire here. Um, and he'll do that on the other lead. And again, we're going to show you mm, almost as much soldering as possible. And in the beginning, we'll go with some more detailed stuff here that we're showing. Whoops, camera freaked out there. Um, so now he's got them um, uh, stripped. Now what he's gonna need to do is call tinning the wire. If you don't know how to tin a wire, again, this is not the video for you. You're gonna go ahead and wanna go look at Irv's video on tinning or find one on YouTube or wherever else that you like to do. Okay, so we've uh, finished with the tinning of the wires here. Um, and you know, we're not gonna show you all of that because it's just take too long but hopefully you guys know how to pre-tin wires. Now, before we go ahead and do these wires, we want to go back to that heat shrink that we were talking about. Okay, so first thing to do is, uh, Brian's gonna go ahead and put the heat shrink over one of the wires, 
and he's gonna just slide it away free and clear, just get it out of the way. It's gotta be on there though, because if you forget it, you can't obviously put it on there once the wire is already um, soldered on. So we just get those out of the way. It doesn't matter which wire you put it on, just as long as it's on the, um, uh, you know, out of the way, so you can see that. And now what he'll do is we're just gonna have him pre-tin uh, the iron, and then he can connect up the, uh, uh, the wires. So you can see there, there's a little bit of solder smoke in there, perfect. And he's just gonna touch him. And that's all he really needs to do. You see, right there it's solid. Um, oops, you showing that as a pull? Hold on, I gotta get back there. There you go, go ahead and pull on again. <laughs> there you go. Um, so it's a strong connection. You notice he didn't have to do it for like five seconds or wait there or throw on gobs of solder. It's just not necessary. Okay, it should hold just fine. Now he's gonna do the other wire. I'll see if I get that one in frame. Again, he's gonna pretend the uh, iron. That's kinda out of camera right now, but there you go. He's got a little solder on the iron and he's just gonna touch it. And it doesn't matter too, by the way, like I noticed that um, even Phil, who I used to be helping me with the uh, lightsabers, he kinda has like a shaky hand too, and Brian sometimes, you know, <laughs> be, be a little shaky. You know, we're all like that, you know? So it doesn't have to be perfect. You just have to do your best and you test it. You test it by pulling on it. If the pull test is the perfection test. If you can't do anything to those wires, then you're good. You don't want to pull too hard or go too crazy, but you know, you're fine. So you can see that's some begin uh, beginning examples. They're not the best solders in the world, they're not super clean, doesn't really matter. Um, now for Brian, he may need to clip off a little bit of the excess here um, in order to get the shrink tube to go over. And this is probably, I think it's, is this your first time using the shrink stuff? Yep. Yeah, it's the first time he's used it, so there you go. And it's only been recent for me to do it too. But anyways, what he'll do here, is he's just gonna clip off a little bit of the excess. You know, where that way it can make the wire a little bit flatter and all this kind of stuff like that. And then he can uh, slide the shrink tube over it. Okay? So I'll get a little bit of that. Okay. Now he's going to slide those little tubes over. You can do one at a time or both, it doesn't really matter. And hopefully you have enough of the shrink tube cut off so that it covers the solder joint fairly well. It doesn't, again, have to be perfect, but you want it, of course, covering. The exposed metal, the the wire, and so forth. That's the whole point. So slide one over, and then kind of separate his hands from it, and then he can get the a lighter. Um, you can do this any way you want, but I've got a lighter here provided for him, um, as you can see there. And he's just going to kind of um, turn it on and light the the, sh the shrink uh, tube a little bit up, the heat shrink. And you'll see it'll shrink. That's the whole point. And that's all he needs. Right there is good enough. No more than that. Just a couple passes to make sure it shrinks down and you get yourself a nice covered lead. It's still going to be tight under there, that's the solder holding it and the uh, heat shrink is uh, uh, there to protect the exposed lead. And he'll do that on this one as well. And that'll be most of the, uh, oops, most of the uh, explanation of how that works. So if you haven't done that before and you're unfamiliar, hopefully this will help you out. It's not really that difficult. There you go, that's plenty. Excellent. You don't really need too much pass. As soon as you see it shrink, you're good. Okay? So there you go. Now he's got his speaker wires connected. You can see the quick disconnect over here. And anytime he wants to release the speaker and do whatever with it, maybe it's preventing him from putting all the wiring in his tube. That's really important to think about when you put it in your hilt. Now he can disconnect it. In fact, if he wants, someday he could upgrade the speaker. Or let's say the speaker fries. Like say I go and smash it right now. I mean, the whole point is it's repairable in a very simple way. And he doesn't, doesn't have to go through all this new garbage of rewiring, resoldering, and all that. Now obviously you can't quite quick disconnect every single wire. I mean, you could, but it'd be a big pain in the butt. The main wires to think about quick disconnecting are your speaker, probably more where your LED goes, whoa, there we go, and uh, possibly your battery. Um, you may do some switches and whatnot, but those are your most likely candidates, the uh, speaker, the LED, and your battery. Okay, so we'll move on to something else.